Got some Detroit Lions news for you folks today. And in this video, we're going to talk about it. ESPN showing some negative love towards Lions defense. Going to talk you about why they ranked the Lions defense where they did, what it means. Brad Holmes' draft philosophy regarding linebackers. He is not a big fan of taking them. We're going to talk about it as well as guess who's back? Back again. That's Tim Boyle. And we're going to get into Taylor Decker's contract restructure. What does it mean for all of us? But before we get into today's video, if you think it's a smart and sound idea to listen to Hanson's Oom Bop Scooby Doo Doo Bop Boom Bop 24 7 till your ears bleed, go ahead and subscribe to my channel because we talk all things Detroit Lions news and rumors. Sometimes being a Lions fan, you feel like you're dying slowly. Also, take that like button with you. Put the headphones on and let that bad boy explode. Let's get into today's Lions news. You know who really loves the Detroit Lions? That is ESPN and their ranking of the Lions defense. You say, can't wait to hear what they said. They, they believe. The Detroit Lions defense will be ranked number 32 in the NFL. Yes, we will hold the worst ranked defense in the NFL per ESPN. I get it. If you look at last year, it was Jeeks. It was bad. I do believe the Detroit Lions will not have the worst ranked defense this year, even though it's still not going to be great. It's not, not going to be nothing to hang your hat on. We're not talking about Buffalo Bills team. We're not going to be talking about some great defense from the 85 Bears. Or we're going to talk about a lower half defense in the NFL. I think between 22-ish area for the Lions defense. Maybe top teens, low 20s. That's what I have for the Lions defense with the additions of getting Ada Hutchinson and Austin Bryant coming back. Charles Harris. I feel like they really got a good defensive line, for sure. We do got a better defensive line. We can get after the quarterback, and that's going to help out, obviously, big time. And with the emergence of Jeffrey Okuda, if he can stay healthy, him and Amani Awarie should be better than last year. I think it can jump up to that range. Let me know, though. What do you think about that in the comments section? Also, make sure you follow me on Twitter, at MicroMike85. That is my handle. DMs are open. You can hit me up. We can BS. Have some fun. Folks, the favorite player in Detroit is back. The number one guy is back here in Detroit. On the practice squad, Tim Boyle has signed with the Detroit Lions to the practice squad. You say, why the hell is this happening? Well, David Blau was supposed to sign with the Lions practice squad, but... He went and signed with the Minnesota Vikings. He got tired of the games, I'm sure, as he should. Last year, if you remember, they would never even give David Blau a chance at all. It was Tim Boyle all the way. And they cut Tim Boyle, and they released David Blau. He figured, why the hell am I even trying? He went to the Vikings practice squad. Good for him. But we needed to have a quarterback that knew the system. And since we got... Nate Sudfield, we didn't have a guy who knew the system on the practice squad. When you think of the practice squad, they help they help train and, and help coach for the regular season. He knows he knows the playbook. It makes sense. Still, am I thrilled about it? Not really. I would like to have a younger guy in there. And maybe they do get a younger guy, throw him on the practice squad. That would be nice because Tim Boyle is not the future of this team. When I think of practice squad, I, especially quarterbacks, I just think developmental player. But if we have a mass injuries to Sudfield or to Jared Goff, it's it's over anyways. So at the end of the day, does it really matter from there? No, you're not going to win a game if both your quarterbacks go down. It is what it is. I just like to have a developmental young guy back there. So honestly, eh, it is what it is. We'll see, though. We will see for sure, but what does he bring to the Lions? Maybe he brings a knowledge that can help practice squatters. Again, we're not talking about someone that's going to go out there and make plays. That's, that's not the case at all. We're talking about a guy who's going to help prepare the team and be a dummy 
for the starters and backups. You know, if we're going against the Jalen Hurts, you'd like to have a player with the same time of similar aspects of a Jalen Hurts who can be a dual threat quarterback. So you have a player like that on the practice squad, and they can practice against a running quarterback. Now, Tim Boyle's not that, but he knows the system, and he's a guy, he's a quarterback like other quarterbacks in the NFL that will be facing against. They can use him as a dummy quarterback, not making fun of him, but as literally like a like a puppet to be used for preparation for a game. He ain't never leaving Detroit, folks. He's going to be here for good. That's Tim Boyle. He is a Detroit Lion for the next 5 million years. Let me know in the comments section right now. Are you happy that Tim Boyle is back? You put Y for that one. Are you happy he's, or are you not happy he's back? You put N in the comments section. Let me know what you think on this one. That will be the pinned comment for this video. It's going to be interesting one to say the least. Let's go ahead and get into Taylor Decker here. Now, if you don't know, Taylor Decker did restructure his contract, saved the Lions $4.5 million. You say, why the hell is this happening? Why would he do something like that? Well, here's the reason why. First off, five players in the end reserve, they account for just over $4 million in cap space. Jamison Williams on the reserve NFI list, $3.1 million. Four players on the reserve pup list, around $18 million in practice squad of $3.4 million. So this is not a move that's to be made because I've seen that comments on many different forums. Well, Lions are going to make a move now to make a play. That's not the case at all. That doesn't mean they're going to make a case to bring another player in for the Lions. It just means they're saving the money right now, so they're going to go with everything they got going on right now. That's all really it is. So nothing of a big deal regarding that front. It is what it is. Let's go ahead and get into what Brad Holmes, though, is thinking here. Save money. Good to go this year. And you got to understand our cap space for next year is quite a bit, so it's not going to really do anything. Taylor Decker's not going anywhere, but he's just getting it good for this year. Next year, we really have some money to save. Now, I read a ton of articles today, and it all came out today about Brad Holmes not liking linebackers. His words match how he's drafting. Let's hear what he's saying here. You can always look at a successful certain positions that you may be able to hit in the later rounds. Holmes said, speaking in response to a question about Rodriguez, specifically cited safety as well. I was talking with Ray Agnew about when we in the Rams draft safeties. Jordan Fuller in the sixth round, but he had a pretty good idea that he's a high floor player. He ended up being a starter. But there are certain positions that you kind of look at and assess that may be able to find gold in the later rounds. And inside linebacker is a good volume of them throughout the draft. He's talking about how you don't like taking linebackers before day three of the draft because you can find gems in the draft. And I look, I'm perfectly fine with finding gems, especially linebacker. If you can find linebackers in the later rounds or any position, I'm all for 100%. But I don't agree with the idea you don't take a certain position before a day in the draft. Well, I just won't take this position until day three. What if the talent is exceedingly and you're just sitting there, and that player falls to you, you're going to just pass up because it's a certain position? No, I wouldn't do that. I, <clears throat> I'd be looking at every position. I look at whatever can help the team out the best player available on the board. That's what I would do, regardless of a certain position. Now, I'm not going to take no kicker in the first round or a punter in the first round. That's stupid. But if you look at multiple positions... Would you pass on a linebacker just because? Well, eh, I wouldn't do that. I'm not going to pass on a, a TJ Watt or a Micah Parsons who is somewhat a hybrid position or anything like that just because they're a certain position. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take the best player available approach regardless of position. 
So if he's suggesting, and that's what the, all these articles you have to check out, that they don't take a linebacker before day three, that is, that's, that's not a smart move if you ask me. It's not smart. I'll take whatever is the best at that position at that spot. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the best available. That's what I'm going to do. And the Lions, we have an issue with linebacker. So if the next year's draft in 2023, well, I'm just not going to take a linebacker before day three, but there could be some damn good ones there, like a Noah Sewell. I think you all know him from the Oregon Ducks. You're just going to pass on it because it's a certain position? No, I think that's a terrible idea. And, and same with safety. He's talking about safety. Don't do it. You just take the best player available regardless of the position. Now, if you can find gems, that's awesome. That's what it's all about is finding those gems in the fifth, sixth, and seventh rounds. We've seen it with Chase Lucas. Good player that we got in the seventh round. You've seen again with Malcolm Rodriguez. You got in the sixth round. Jerry Jacobs, you found those. That's awesome. That's what makes you a really good general manager is finding those. But you also got to find talent in all of the rounds. Second round and first round. If there's a player that's available that's the best at their position, you just do it. I'm, I, I, that's the way I feel. That's the way I think you should go. If that's, if you go by that, then you're not going to screw up draft picks. So that's the way that I see it. Maybe you guys differ from me. This, this channel is not all about me. This channel is about you. What do you guys think in the comment section? Do you agree or disagree with me? Go ahead and blow up the comment section with your thoughts. This channel is for you. Now, that's what it's all about, folks. That's what it's all about. With that said, adios.